I'm Alex Sanchez with the University of New Mexico Health Sciences. And I'm Josh Herbert, Aquatic Division Manager for the City of Albuquerque. We're coming to you from the Rio Grande Pool as part of our continuing partnership with the city. Today, we're going to be talking about PFDs, that's personal flotation devices. We're also going to be demonstrating a parent taught class that's ages six months to two years of age. Plus, we're gonna be giving you some tips and tricks to keep your kids safe from the sun and what is proper sunscreen for them. So let's get started. Let's talk about PFDs. I have three examples here today. We have an adult life jacket, a child life jacket, and a vest. So when I talk about PFDs, I mean personal flotation devices. In order to have it considered a PFD or a prefer personal flotation device, it has to have a US Coast Guard approved label on it. So as it say, states here, US Coast Guard approved, it will also have a UL listing that is a issued flotation aid. Notice on the child life jacket or child PFD, it also says US Coast Guard approved and it says UL flotation aid. This one, however, this one is a water vest and it's designed to help your child learn how to swim. Once the, light, once the vest is on, it kind of tilts the child forward in a motion that helps promote swimming. So when you have a water vest on, water wings on, or anything like that that doesn't have that UL certification, you always have to maintain proper supervision and you have to be within arm's reach of your child at all times whenever they're wearing something like this or water wings or something of the sort. These two vests should always be worn if you're on a boat or if you're in open water. They can also be worn in the pool, but they shouldn't be a replacement of parent supervision. So regardless of which vest or flotation device they have, you always need to maintain proper parent supervision. So when you're looking for life jackets for boating or out in open water, US Coast Guard approved and that UL certification. Thank you. Hi, my name is Julia Witten and I am the swim lesson coordinator for the City of Albuquerque Public Pools. Today we will be going over parent taught and all the things you need to know to have fun in the water with your toddler. Specifically, we'll be going over pool entries, holding positions, comfortable water explorations, jumping in, getting comfortable with floating and blowing bubbles. The first entry we're going to be talking about today is step entry. A lot of pools have these steps available for your child and you to really ease into the water. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna hold your child's hand and carefully and slowly help them in the water step by step. The next kind of pool entry you can do is poolside entry. You can have the child sat on the pool deck as you gently bring them into the water. The first holding position we're gonna go over is face-to-face -face position. The parent and child are facing each other and the parent's hands are holding the child's trunk just under the armpits. The parent is holding the child away from them without having the child rest against their body. The next one we're gonna be going over is the hip straddle. The child's legs are on either side of the parent's body and the child is sitting on the parent's hip. The parent has one hand supporting the child's back with the other hand on the child's forward facing thigh. Now we'll be doing the chest support holding position. The parent will squat in the water with the water at shoulder height Facing their child, the parent will support the child in a stomach down position. The parent's palm should be on the child's chest with their thumbs in the child's armpit and fingers pointed toward the children's feet. The child's face will be out of the water. The last holding position is the back support. The parent will support the child in a back down position with the parent's hand supporting the child's back in the same manner as the chest support hold. 
The child's head will rest on the parent's forearm. Alternatively, the parent may hold the child closer and have the child rest their head on the parent's chest or shoulder. It's really important to have your child comfortably explore the water and gradually introduce the water to them. A way you can do this is by sprinkling water across their head and singing songs just to make it fun. As your child is beginning to become more comfortable jumping in, it's important that you start by only having the child submerge up to their waist and work up to the next skill, going underwater. Do it slowly and comfortably. The next thing you can implement and introduce to your child is the floating positions. The first one you can do is the front float. You can utilize toys to help them with this, having them stretch out their arms and what we like to call a Superman float as they grab for those toys. Another thing that you can also introduce while holding them in the float is leg movement and arm movement. Specifically, kicking is really good for them to get in this position and it really helps them gain that muscle memory. All right, next we'll be doing a back float. Something that you can tell your child that helps them to really engage in this position is to look up to the sky. All right, next we'll be going over blowing bubbles. It's really important that you're holding your child in a face-to-face -face hold while doing this. You also want to demonstrate for your child how to blow the bubbles with just their chin and mouth under the surface of the water. Make sure that their nose stays above water. You want to build up this skill until their whole face is underwater. Make sure that you notice how comfortable they are and only go off of that. A really important thing that you can do that'll really help is if you hum a song that helps them blow the bubbles. These were just some ways that you can introduce the water to your toddler in super fun ways. It's important that you just make this so fun and engaging for your child. Use toys, different games, different songs. Find things that your child likes that you can implement in the things that you're doing with them in the water. Hi everyone, we're gonna be talking about sunscreen. It's a very beautiful sunny day out. We're at the Rio Grande outdoor pool. And uh, although it's very beautiful out, and it's very inviting to get into the water, we wanna make sure that everybody stays safe. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you about proper sunscreen. So first off, we've got many different types of sunscreen here as a demonstration. But first thing you wanna do is make sure you apply a really good amount of sunscreen. You wanna apply at least two ounces to your body and try to cover every portion of your skin um, with sunscreen to block out those UV rays. Um, it's sunny out right now. We've got a few clouds in the sky. If it's overcast completely and the sun's being blocked out, uh, a lot of people think that it might be okay to go out in the sun without sunscreen on, but actually the clouds only block out about 20% of the UV rays. So you're still getting uh, some harsh UV rays and even uh, with that cloud cover, it's going to be intensifying those UV rays. So you still need to wear sunscreen on even though it might be cloudy out. So next thing I want to talk about is knowing your numbers. So this is SPF 30, we have 50, and we have uh, the spray here. So we have uh, an array from 50 or 30 to 50, and you can go up to 100. I've seen 115, but it's recommended that you wear at least uh, SPF of 30. So you want to apply broadband spectrum sunscreen of uh, 30 or more. The higher SPF you go up, the more protection you're gonna get, but the difference is, is very small. So if you have sunscreen that's SPF 15, you're only actually, you're blocking out about 93% of the UV rays. If you move up to 30, you're blocking out 97%. If you go up to 100 SPF, you're blocking out 99% of UV rays. So the higher the better, but you actually don't get that much difference if you uh, go from 30 all the way to 100. So if you're applying 30 broadband spectrum, you'll be safe. The other thing we have to think about is it's very hard to get every portion of your skin. So uh, you want to uh, prevent uh, the sun from hitting your face. You can wear a hat. 
that blocks out the sun. Uh, we have smaller hats for children. If you have children, make sure they have hats on. Also, wear, sun wear sunglasses to protect your eyes. So we've applied our sunscreen at least two ounces on our body. And we want what a lot of people forget is to reapply. You want to reapply on a regular basis at least once every two hours. So reapply every two hours and try to avoid peak times in the day if you can. So those peak time, times where the sun is right above you, really harsh is between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So if you can avoid those really harsh times of the day, that would be a good way to avoid those effects of the sun. If not, make sure you wear plenty of sun cream. Um, the last two things I want to talk about, one is tanning beds. So tanning beds uh, are very risky, so you want to try to avoid tanning beds um, and uh, get your sun exposure from uh, the natural light. So make sure you wear plenty of sunscreen. If you're worried about getting that tan, wearing sunscreen still allows you to tan the skin. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about is vitamin D. People worry about not getting enough vitamin D and they all want to wear sunscreen because they want to get that vitamin D. But actually you only need about 15 minutes of sun exposure every two or three days to get enough vitamin D. So um, and that's you most people get from either driving or walking into the store. Um, so you'll get plenty of vitamin D. What our main concern is avoiding risks of cancer and uh, intensifying aging. So you wanna make sure that you wear plenty of sunscreen, wear proper protection and uh, be safe. Thank you. We're so grateful for this partnership with the city of Albuquerque, but we wanna remind you, these videos are not intended to be substitutions for swim lessons. Please be sure to get your child or yourself swim lessons at either the city or another licensed facility. We really hope you've enjoyed watching these, and if you've missed any of the segments, you can always catch them online or our social media channels.